The standard starting position is the patient sitting straight, with their back straight and head in a neutral position. Their head and yours should be on the same level. Sit them on a swivelling chair with a fixed base, yourself on a swivelling chair with wheels. You may either straddle the patient or sit side saddle, depending on which is most appropriate. The patient sits with the relevant ear facing you. The head begins in a neutral position, but when examining the external auditory canal and tympanic membrane, it will be tilted towards the opposite shoulder. Begin with pinna examination. So an examination of the pinna, the pinna looks normal. There's no preauricular pits, there are no end oral scars. Folding the ear forward, there's no postauricular scars. And on palpation of the ear, there's no bar heart abutments, mastoid divot or cochlear implant tilting the head away from us to examine the external ear canal, which is the largest speculum. We can see that the external ear canal is normal, there are no osteomas, no obstructing lesions, and the skin is normal. Moving on to the tympanic membrane, we can see that the past tensor is normal, and tilting the head further away, we can see that the past flaccid is normal. There is no evidence of retraction pocket, there are no masses, there are no Schwarzer sign. I like to perform a pneumatic otoscopy to assess the mobility of the tympanic membrane. Begin with a screening examination. Can you hear this? Yes. Can you hear this? Yes. Which is louder? They are the same. Thank you. I'm going to perform a Weber examination. If I pop it up here, do you hear it this year, this year, or somewhere in the middle? Somewhere in the middle. I'll move on to a Rene examination. This is number one. That's number two. Number one. Number two. Which is louder? One. This is number one, this is number two, this is number one, this is number two, which is louder? One. I'm going to test your hearing now. I'm going to cover your face from the side so you can't lip read. I'm going to produce a noise on your other ear, which you please ignore. Please repeat after me. Twenty. Thirty-two. Forty-two. Fifty-two. A Barani box is essentially a noise maker, with a volume of 110 decibels when held at the external auditory meatus, or 80 decibels at the conchal bowl. It is used for masking when a severe to profound unilateral hearing loss is suspected. Barani box masking can be used for free field testing and for Rene testing. Hold the Barani box in the hand closest to the ear being masked. Warn the patient that there will be a loud noise in that ear, which they are to ignore. Wind up the box and, holding it well away from the ear to begin with, activate the noise. Bring the box gradually closer to the ear and, if tolerated, hold it either at the conchal bowl or at the external auditory canal itself. Perform your hearing assessment. I'm going to test your left hearing now. I want you to tell me if you hear the sound or not. So, can you hear the sound there? No. Can you hear the sound there? Yes. Okay, so, can't hear that? No. And you can hear that? Yes. Okay. I'm just going to test at the back again. I'm going to bring a sound in towards your other ear. I want you to tell me if you can still hear the tuning fork when you hear that sound. Okay? So, you can hear that? Yes. Can you still hear it now? No. I'm going to say a series of words. I want you to repeat them if you hear them. I'm going to make a noise in the other ear. I'd like you just to ignore that. Okay. 20. 
30, 40, 50. I'm just going to make a louder sound in the other ear. Okay, I want you to ignore that again. I'm going to continue to say another series of words again. Do say something if you hear them. Okay. 50, 60, 70, 80. Can you hear any of this? Begin with general statements about the patient's height, sex, ethnicity and skin features. If there is an obvious feature, comment on this first before progressing in an ordered manner. For example, the most striking feature is a large dorsal hump. Looking at the nose, the dorsum is straight with appropriate brow tip lines. The superior, middle and lower thirds are normal in width and alignment. The tip is appropriate for the patient. On the lateral view, the nasofrontal angle is within normal range. The dorsum is straight with a supratip rate present. The tip is appropriately rotated for a female with an approximate angle of 100 degrees and the nose is not over or under projected. There is no excess columellar show or retraction. On the basal view, there is no columellar scar to suggest previous open surgery. The basal view is symmetrical, as are the nostril openings, with a normal lobule to columella ratio. Begin by commenting on the patient's general appearance. The patient is of Caucasian appearance with no obvious syndromic features. The nose is grossly normal on external examination and they are breathing through the nose. Please breathe in for me and out and again and out and again and out. There is airflow through both nasal passages. Please take a quick sniff in through your nose and out and again and out and again. There is no obvious nasal valving. Breathe in through your nose and out and again and out. Which is easier? The second one. Breathe in through your nose and out and again and out. Which is easier? The second one. The nasal vestibule appears normal with no obvious inflammation. The internal nasal valve is not narrowed. The septum is straight. The inferior turbinate is not grossly inflamed or congested. Neither is the middle turbinate. There is no obvious mucopus or polyps. The left nasal vestibule is also not inflamed. Once again, the nasal valve is not narrowed the nasal septum is straight with no spurs. The inferior turbinate and middle turbinate are normal without inflammation or hypertrophy. There is no mucopus or nasal polyposis. Open up please. Using a tongue depressor, inspect the superior gingival buccal sulcus for corbal luck and midfascial degloving incisions, the hard palate for destructive lesions and the oropharynx for prolapsing polyps or tumours. Nasendoscopy is then done for a complete nasal examination. Start with the mouth closed, inspect the lips and general facial symmetry. Have a tongue depressor in both hands and your headlight on. Ask the patient to remove any dentures. Inspect all subsites in a logical order, then palpate with a gloved hand. The lip is normal. Can you please open your mouth as wide as it can go? There's no trismus. Can you please stick out your tongue and move it left and right? There's no restriction of tongue movement. I'd like to have a look at these subsites now. The buccal mucosa is normal. Just relax the tongue, sulcus are normal, just relax the tongue, lift the tongue all the way up to the ceiling, so all the mouth is normal, and pop your tongue back down, relax, just say ah, ah. the oral pharynx is normal, the soft palate is normal, the hard palate is normal. I like to palpate these subsides with a glove finger. Generally, we begin examining from the front, then move posteriorly when examining the thyroid. 
On external examination, there are no obvious deformities, masses or scars visible. Beginning with the left parotid, it does not feel enlarged and there are no palpable masses. The suboccipital lymph nodes, submental lymph nodes and submandibular lymph nodes are not enlarged. The cervical chain on the left is not enlarged and there are no palpable masses. Level 5 and the supraclavicular fossa are also normal. Moving on to the right, the right parotid is not enlarged and there are no palpable masses. The suboccipital, submandibular and submental lymph nodes are not enlarged. The cervical chain on the right side does not contain any enlarged lymph nodes and there are no masses throughout the posterior triangle or supraclavicular fossa. Moving posteriorly to examine the thyroid, the right thyroid lobe does not feel enlarged and there are no palpable nodules or masses. The left thyroid lobe is also not enlarged and there are no palpable masses or nodules. Would you please swallow for me? Begin with a screening examination for gross vocal dysfunction and vocal cord paralysis. Ask the patient to take a deep breath in through their mouth and then out again, assessing for stridor and wheeze. Ask them to breathe in and then cough strongly. A third breath in and then counting out loud for as long as they can, often with you, to assess for both phonatory time and for general vocal characteristics. Looking at the neck, look for any scars that may potentially have affected the cranial nerves. Specifically inspect for thyroid, thyroplasty, carotid endarterectomy and glomus jugulare scars. Move on to the oral cavity. Assess palatal movement looking for a high vagal lesion and hypoglossal lesions bilaterally. At this stage generally examining the larynx is indicated. This could be done either with a mirror or endoscopically, depending upon the equipment that is available. Assess for vocal cord mobility and also for focal lesions involving the larynx and adjacent structures. 